Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Alpine Odyssey. My name is Uthris and I will be taking you through the construction progress of the wonderful park here in Season 2, Episode 2. So, if you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, leave a like, and uh, leave a comment down below on what you think this episode is about. You can probably tell due to the title because that's how I roll on YouTube. Anyways, we're gonna be starting out by creating some small detailed items that we can use throughout the park. So using the forklift that we used uh, and built on the stream last weekend, we are measuring out and creating our own pallets. Now I know you guys are gonna say, Uthers, why don't you just use DLC for pallets? They have boxes and, and pallets and empty pallets. You can just place them down whenever you want. Again, Alpine Odyssey, since it is a DLC, basically empty park that is um, something that we need to kind of take into account um, so making our own pallets out of planks and then adding things on top of them is uh, a good chunk of today's episode it does take time to kind of do this stuff but uh, once they are built we can kind of quickly slap down details and little things around um, at a decent pace so that's something really cool and uh, something I suggest doing yourself so these first couple pallets, they are what I consider kind of raw material pallets, right? So we're gonna have a pallet full of um, wooden planks and a pallet full of bricks. Now the bricks, because it has that smooth top, right? I wanted some texture to show through of actual bricks. And to do that, using the top of one of these castle slit uh, type of windows, we can do that by just using the very top brick of it and uh, color it roughly the same color as the other bricks. I could have probably colored one a little off red or another one a little bit of a, of a darker uh, color itself just to keep the variation up. And that's something that you can do, but sometimes it just takes too much time to sit there and worry about uh, the coloration of things, though it is uh, an important of a detail. Other than that, we have a material stockpile over here for metal. Um, this could be things like metal rails, um, rivets, or what have you. In, in essence, I wanted to kind of add um, these stockpiles almost as if in Planet Coaster this was a requirement to uh, play the game in the simulation. I think it would be kind of cool. Um, when it comes to simulation games, I think Planet Coaster is maybe a little weak on its simulation side. Um, that's just something that it's always been. It's been a little bit more creative, especially for me. Um, granted, if, if I probably played on Sim, it would just mean this project would take 20 years rather than uh, hopefully the two years that it's going to take. Otherwise, we're gonna be adding some other pallets though. Um, these ones are gonna be considered almost like uh, cardboard boxes, uh, shipping boxes full of either like food, miscellaneous items, things that aren't really technically raw materials. So um, I'm coloring this first one to be kind of an off green um, using some white, almost like shipping labels kind of stacked to the side here. And again, I know the DLCs do have cardboard boxes and they look great, don't get me wrong. Um, I would suggest using those, but just to keep the continuity of, of the save, we are creating everything ourselves. There's going to be two variations here. One, of course, being green. The other one being more of uh, that cardboard color you might be um, more used to seeing here. And it's going to have a similar shipping label type of format, just white boxes, kind of slammed on top of each other. Um, it, it's kind of a neat little detail to have these little boxes and really I might make some more coloration as we keep progressing adding these little backstage details because now that we have these I can quickly and hopefully make constant upgrades iterations to these palettes and just start slapping them down kind of everywhere like we are about to do here. We have these large kind of stone uh, raw material uh, storage areas. So I figured this would be a good first place for some of these items here. Um, so laying down a lot of the wood in one, um, one might be dedicated here for brick. And you can try and mix up these as much as possible. I'm not doing a crazy amount of custom work. I am maybe adjusting the height of some, removing some of the top 
loose bits just so it looks a little bit more random in general. We're gonna have a discarded pile of pallets kind of just off to the side here. That's kind of uh, something that I would think would be here while people are kind of um, finished with them, they'll put them off to the side kind of nearby and uh, eventually they'll get cleaned up as time goes on or maybe they'll just be left there for the next 20 years. Who knows, Alpine Odyssey is an old park but at this point it's an old park. Um, or a, it's technically a new park, but at this stage, I'm slowly retroing it back to be an old park a, a little bit because it's been open for many years <laughs> at this point in in time in, when it comes to the sim speed of the game. So I think I think actually um, reflecting that a little bit in areas makes the most sense. Um, a lot of the times we're going to be adding a large retaining wall over here because these two um, concrete pads are on different heights and of course um, you know you got to be careful of your water table um, these walls are super important so you don't get uh, slippage in the terrain and then you lose um, a lot of that kind of asphalt up there and um, it also just looks really cool to have kind of a bulkhead um, holding back a lot of this terrain and uh, gives you a little bit of an extra bit of a detail that you wouldn't really have otherwise. As you know, um, down there in the parking lot, that's kind of a one-way turn. So I'm not really worried about the sight line being blocked um, by the actual corner there. Um, normally when you're doing parking lots or places where a lot of traffic would go, you don't want too many blind corners, especially since there's gonna be pedestrians around here walking um, going to jobs because this is staff parking, but also uh, more heavy trucks might be coming in just to deliver goods and items to Alpine Odyssey. So um, it, it's kind of always in my back of my mind when I'm laying these out. I want these lanes to be wide enough for maybe eventually a semi truck to be fitting through um, or, or something larger than say just our box truck and a flatbed currently that we have. Who knows? Every weekend we tend to kind of stream kind of work on smaller details, maybe interiors, but you know, since the backstage doesn't really have much of that going on, we just kind of spend a lot of it creating small details or um, vehicles for either the parking lot or just the backstage area in general. This uh, retaining wall is kind of gonna be uh, buffeted with a little bit of greenery. Um, greenery is used a lot near areas like these um, to kind of hold the soil together, keep it from slipping even farther, but also a lot of greenery to kind of cover up the fact that the landscape is not flush against this wall. So um, using shrubbery to kind of cover up ugly areas is one of the key tricks to Planet Coaster or really any creative building game. Um, it can do wonders. Over here, um, off to the side near the squared off portion of asphalt, this is actually going to be another fenced in area. And this is where we spend the bulk of today's episode. Um, I would say probably the last half of it. And what I wanted to do early on with Alpine Odyssey, when we were talking about maybe having backstage elements or what people would want to see in the backstage elements, we were getting a lot of suggestions of just storage areas, um, but also potentially areas for like spare parts for rides. And so that's what that whole area is kind of going to represent, at least so far in this section. Um, in the meantime though, we are going to get a little bit of parking spaces here, just in the center spine. Um, and the best thing for these type of scenarios, in my opinion, is to use angled parking. Um, not only will that make it easier to get in and out of your parking spots, um, it kind of saves a little bit of room um, to get around because you can dedicate one side to one specific direction. Um, that way you don't have to make two, two lane wide um, parking spots. And so that's kind of a neat little thing. Um, noticing that I didn't need a lot of these parts, I went ahead and deleted that and um, kind of trimmed this up to be a little bit more flush and believable looking. Um, I will say these lines are probably a little longer than they really needed to be. So adding a double line in the center uh, kind of helped mitigate that a little bit. I would say it still looks a little weird at the moment. There's also going to be some additional staff parking kind of off to the left side as it bends up kind of towards 
the road leading to other backstage elements, be that the train tracks or maybe to the backstage of the Asian area. Now, the right side where people and staff are currently walking, that's not really going to be touched upon in this episode. I wanted to see if I could get this whole upper layer completed, but um, judging from the length of this episode and uh, how much time really I had to work on it, um, that's not going to get done, but we'll focus mainly on the left side. It's going to look pretty cool. Um, the parking lots here I decided to use for a lot of more utility vehicles specifically because they were a bit of a larger uh, parking spot to begin with, which just made kind of the most sense for me. Um, we're also going to be basically editing the box truck here a little bit, and this is going to turn into a cargo container. Uh, the box trucks luckily had these nice um, kind of industrial doors on the back of them already. So essentially I kind of stripped them off and I'm going to be using them as the doors for the cargo containers. Uh, cargo containers are pretty common in industrial commercial areas uh, to store a lot of items. Um, it's bulk storage. You can move it easily, uh, put stuff in there and just ship it out and, and get rid of it. So we are going for a full, uh, pretty much length semi-trailer type of item here. And maybe eventually we will make a semi-trailer or truck to have these be hauled around in the backstage. I think that would be something cool to have. Um, simple ribbing and a simple shape and just the detail on the doors really sells this object. So um, I would really recommend, you know, using the art shapes for simple uh, colorations and ideas um, really do well for these items. Though um, I will say the shininess is a little weird and generally how I deal with shiny items in Planet Coaster is if you just kind of dull the color, make it desaturate a little bit, it kind of mitigates that for the most part. Um, your mileage may vary uh, depending on what kind of material it is, but uh, that's kind of the trick I use. I didn't want a completely blinding white one either, so I kind of colored it a little bit more um, smoky gray, um, and so I think that worked out in our favor. We're gonna be filling this area up with a few trailers here along the edge. Um, I could have filled this whole thing up with trailers and, and just making it a large story, storage area. It would have been really quick to do so, um, but I thought it would have been a little too bland. So that's where the plan for creating kind of abandoned or um, parts for the rides, specifically in the European area, comes in. Um, so we're gonna be adding some spare tracks and uh, for, for the train. We're gonna be adding some spare tracks for the roller coaster. In fact, every ride or kind of key feature in uh, the European section it's going to be represented a little bit into this storage uh, area. That way people will know that it's specifically for this European side. And we might have areas like this kind of for each theme. I think it would be cool to um, represent that, you know, repairs can be made. Um, we have enough materials. We can make it faster, better, and stronger here in Alpine Odyssey. So you'll notice I'm using some of the material um, as well, so extra rail, so the metal bits. Um, we are using the wood pallets as well for, you know, rail ties um, and, and the, the wooden supports of, say, the coasters. So, you know, mixing it up, um, combining everything that we're doing off in little chunks to make a solid piece is a really cool strategy to do. Um, the coaster is going to be interesting because it slopes a lot more than the rails. I was able to get like a 60 degree and, and 15 degree angle slope in there. And it looks really cool. It makes a dynamic kind of shape, which is something I wanted. It also introduces some of the wooden supports as well, since it is a wooden coaster kind of backup material here. It just made sense to have that. Um, another thing I wanna add in um, from the train is just maybe some old um, ribbing from the supports that goes along uh, the water side. I think that's kind of a cool thing. Um, maybe um, it got damaged in a storm and this is just kind of where they threw it to keep it away. There's also some netting from Warwin, So that's kind of cool as well. We're going to add the industrial gate over here. Now I'm going to make it open 
simply one so I don't have to make the gate really wide. Um, I'm just gonna leave it like this so it looks open and visually it doesn't look like the door is too small. And we are also going to be copying the Tristorm. Um, this was actually really fun for me to do is to try and replicate at least a little chunk of a ride that is such a, a well-finished polis piece and just represent it at, with simple shapes. Simple shapes can go a really long way. So I'm just gonna do a lower part of the arm here. I'll, I'll try and abstractly uh, replicate some of the mechanism for the bearings and where these things hook up. It could be busted, broken, um, and maybe just an old style arm that they kind of replace with the current newer styles. Um, get the the little bit of the the fingers uh, holding these carts out here. And you know, it doesn't matter if these things are maybe a little bit too big or not exactly um, how the ride has it. it. What matters more per se is just getting the feeling and the scale uh, loosely correct. And then that way, when people are kind of looking around the park, they can kind of instantly identify where this is supposed to be. Um, also, add some lights in it because that ride is kind of covered with this stuff. Um, I wish I could kind of make them have some burnt out bulbs or something like that, but hey, what are you gonna do? Sometimes uh, simpler is better. Um, we're gonna use some spotlights here just as extra, almost like um, um, covered uh, bearings or places where the arms might flex. And this is like a covering to go over it to protect those joints. Um, some loose spindles on the ground is a fun little detail. We'll even add a um, maybe broken, uh, torn down, disrepaired section of the carousel covering because I can't really recreate a carousel uh, part exactly. It's a little too small. I figured that just doing the covering would be enough because that's kind of the more instant visual that people see from a distance. Um, more pallets, empty pallets, um, possibly broken pallets kind of filling in this area. And um, you know, the, just the gravel lot is uh, a pretty good look. So we are winding down with today's speed build. I just do some uh, additional work off camera, you know, bushes, trees, overgrowth, um, just some minor details to make it look a little bit more polished than you might be seeing it now. So with that, we're gonna go ahead into real time. You guys will get to see it as it plays in the game and hopefully give me some wonderful feedback in the comments down below. Okay, so here we are taking a look at the supply yard or as my girlfriend likes to call it, the uh, trash pile by Alpine Odyssey. So we got um, a flatbed in here. We got our cool little new little forklift and a whole bunch of things that kind of represent the European section um, we got plants, we got uh, parts of each kind of ride and key element here. Um, we even got some extra slides going in from the um, playground near the edge of it because everyone for some reason really likes that playground. Uh, we have rails for the train. We have rails for the awesome little coaster or only coaster still in Alpine Odyssey, but hopefully that gets changed at some point here soon. We got uh, supply boxes, supply kind of crates and uh, containers going along here and really just a nice open yard where people can kind of back in, drop some stuff up, pick some stuff up, off they go, make their repairs and um, are free to just continue enjoying the actual park itself. I really like this because it fills in a decent amount of area in this backstage without actually needing too many buildings. Um, it's a lot of little parts and it makes up a building, you could say, by itself of its sum total, but um, it just fills in that corner nicely. Um, and with the break of trees going along the edge, I think it adds some detail along the edge of the map that we currently kind of don't have running along here because this fence runs so close. So it's a cool little thing to have back there. Um, we got more little vehicles coming in and out at this point going through into the parking lot. Another kind of flatbed here carrying another little forklift. We have a uh, Alpine Odyssey supply truck dropping off some pallets, maybe picking up some pallets. 
we get um, our supplies being maneuvered around. And uh, I don't know what I want to store in these. I'm thinking maybe some large pipes or um, some longer items. I think that would be kind of nice to have just to balance out the smaller items over here. We get um, just plenty of little greenery bits being formed um, and some things off camera such as these um, elements through here. So where this is, the road's gonna continue along the backstage. Uh, some of the backstage might continue out from these kind of train yard buildings um, up to here. Who knows, this is just kind of where the path got laid out um, when we first put this here. We've got uh, the parking full of kind of utility vehicles and one guy who just wanted to be a little cheeky and uh, park over here. I'm starting to run a sidewalk up and a crosswalk across the parking lot as well. This is going to hopefully just make it look a little bit more of a safe area for you to park and work in. Over here, which uh, what we're probably gonna tackle in the next episode, even though I kind of said that last episode, I think. Um, and this is gonna be a little bit more of just a depot, uh, a shipping kind of drop-off point, pickup point, um, directly going into these restaurants and things. I think that's gonna be pretty cool especially once we get the sidewalk in and staff start kind of walking up into here uh, because we will have some staff rooms. And uh, that'll just give this area a little bit of movement because right now it just kind of looks like a, a snapshot frozen in time. So with that, that is the end of this episode of Alpine Odyssey. The backstage is going really well. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with it so far. I hope you guys are too. As we move into more parking lots, more utility, and uh, future episodes of Alpine Odyssey. If you guys enjoyed the episode, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more creative goodness such as this. Hit that like button. Leave a comment down below for your feedback and any suggestions um, as we move forward with this build. So until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.